Welcome to Motor Rose Music. I am Jeff Thiel and today's video I will clear some of the misty mountain fog that envelops the five symbols, yes, five symbols, that were created for Led Zeppelin's fourth studio album. I decided to do this video after I watched a good video about this album and the word Zoso was used to describe Jimmy Page's symbol. Jimmy Page's symbol, as you see it here, it's not a word. Uh, it's not Zoso. Uh, I, I've looked into this and I've looked and looked for the meaning over the years and as, as of many others. I had been a Zeppelin fan since 1982 and yes that's a long time. <clears throat> since then I've heard people refer to Jimmy Page's symbol as uh, and the fourth album uh, as Zoso and uh, it's ever so slightly, uh, I guess it's kind of funny more than irritating, but it's, uh, and I, I don't take offense to it at all. I mean, that's kind of what it looks like. But I thought it would fun uh, be fun to do a video that shed some light on this that, that perhaps uh, some people have uh, never heard of or never seen before. So I'll go ahead and start at the beginning. Um, if you've ever seen any of the, uh, any Led Zeppelin related stuff, you've seen these four symbols here and let's see hopefully it gets them all we don't want to miss plants but there you go and i'll be uh putting up some pictures of them as we go along here and talk about them uh so you've definitely seen these symbols uh the band's four symbols or sigils as they're sometimes called were obviously chosen before they started uh recording the album i, I think it was probably they picked them out when they were as they were recording it and the choosing of these symbols was Jimmy Page's idea. Uh, back in 1971, uh, as they were working on this album, they, they, they'd been getting hammered by the press for, for years now, uh, either not saying nice things about their songs or them themselves, or just saying generally that they were hype. And uh, so Page came up with the idea for this fourth album to not have the title of or just not have a title and not have the band's name anywhere on it. This, of course, being the iconic fourth Led Zeppelin album. And you also have the awesome uh, uh, Hermit from the tarot card uh, in there as well. Um, so they, they have just the artwork on there. It's completely blank as far as any uh, names or, or titles. And they would only be identified by four symbols, and five if you count the guest singer, Sandy Denny. Uh, <clears throat> but this also created a dilemma for us fans. You know, what the hell do we call it? You know, there's nothing on it. It is it is their fourth album. But, you know, what, what should we call it? Uh, I'll tell you what I call it towards the end of the show here. And but most people call it Led Zeppelin IV, and uh, some call it Four Symbols, and then others, as I've said, call it Zoso. Uh, and again, it's it, the, the symbol is not a word. And so let's get back to the story here. Uh, in Page's brilliant mind, uh, this would prove, assuming it sold well, that the album was selling because it was the music, not the name on the album, not the hype of the band. Uh, and to combat the issue of what Billboard uh, and Cashbox, those are the you know the uh, sales of the week lists that are that are still out today, at least Billboard is. They sent out these four symbols so they could put in the four symbols as the name of the album. Um, Led Zeppelin's record company Atlantic was not real thrilled with not putting their name or not having a title on the album. They, they thought it might be uh, them committing commercial suicide. Um, <clears throat> boy, were they wrong. You know, it's quite an understatement there. Uh, Zeppelin's untitled fourth album has sold uh, about 25 million plus albums just in the United States alone. Uh, their worldwide sales are, I, I would guess, double that. And strangely enough, the album did not make it to number one. It's one of the few albums of Zeppelin's that did not hit number one in the United States. It, it went to number one in the UK and I believe Canada, perhaps Australia and elsewhere. But it was kept out by Carol King's Tapestry, uh, which was a monster album of 1971. Uh, so 
where did these symbols come from? Two of the band members, John Bonham and John Paul Jones, and guest singer Sandy Denny symbols came from a book by Rudolf Koh. Uh, the book is called The Book of Signs, and I actually have this book. I uh, <clears throat> got a little while ago. It's, it's a great book. It's really interesting to see where all these these symbols from you know centuries ago, uh, if not where they came from, at least what their meanings were. A lot of them you've seen before. Um, a lot of religious uh, symbols, and you know, you know, they, there's a wide range of meanings behind them, and they're interpreted differently. But that's where John Bond, John Paul Jones, and Sandy Denny symbols came from. And when I look through the book, the first one that comes up in the book is Sandy Denny's, and I'll place it on, all this stuff on the screen here as we go along. Hers is the three triangles and they're all touching at a central point. And this is an old symbol for the Godhead. That's, Godhead is what it's, what it's called. And nothing else is known about. There was no information there. It's just said nothing else is known. We really don't know why she picked it or if she even had the, the choice to pick it. It's just there. It's kind of like an asterisk that shows that uh, she was the guest on the great song, Battle of Evermore. Uh, now, she was also in a band called Fairport Convention, uh, I know, through the 70s, and she sadly died in uh, 1978, really early death. Um, the next symbol that shows up in Coe's book is John Bonham's, and uh, this is the three interlocking uh, circles. Uh, it's described as a sign of the Trinity, which, you know, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit, uh, depending, I guess, what denomination uh, Christianity you are. Uh, but Bonzo, he may have been thinking father, mother, child uh, when he saw it. Or as Robert Plant said, he noticed in Pittsburgh they were drinking Valentine beer, and that's its logo, although it's inverted. I'll see if I can find that. I'll place it in here if I find it. Uh, next is John Paul Jones's symbol. And as I, I put two in here, and reason being they're very similar, um, and they're both said to be used to exercise evil spirits. And uh, they call for a certain skill and that a clumsy person can't draw them. Very fitting for Jonesy. Uh, Robert Plant's symbol is said to be a sacred symbol from the ancient Moose civilization. Uh, Plant stated uh, it stands for courage and truth uh, to various philosophies. Didn't find anything else on that. And there's feathers used as symbols through all different types of uh, civilizations, but I haven't found one that looks exactly like his, but I'll take his word for it. That's where he got it from. Uh, <clears throat> so next up is the hard one, Jimmy Pages. Here's the big mystery. He has never publicly said where he got it from, and more importantly, what it means to him or what it means in general to other people. Uh, he's never said so. And uh, it's been seen in a few texts and a few manuscripts. I have a book that I got in Kindle format called Grimoires. This is in French, and I don't speak French. Grimoires et, et Rituals Magiques. That's the best I can do. Obviously, it's some um, Grimoires, Rituals of Magic, something to that effect. Uh, and as I said, the book is in French, so I, I just look at bits of it, and then I have Kindle uh, translate it for me. So it's a slow go as far as reading the whole book. But there's also in there, which is it could come in handy. They do, uh, they do tell you how to summon demons. I don't think I'll try that. Um, I also have this uh, January 2002... Uh, Guitar World Magazine. Uh, this has a great article in it of, uh, of these symbols. And uh, the magazine is consequently about Led Zeppelin, the 30th anniversary of Led Zeppelin's fourth album. It was a little late. January 2002 would have been 30 years and two months, but better late than never. And uh, they talk about... Uh, a, the, the man who did this article about a rare manuscript called the Red Dragon or 
Le Dragon Rouge. Again, it's in French. And, but their symbol um, is, is inverted. Their page's symbol in there, the symbol he uses, is inverted. It's upside down from the way we're used to seeing it. Now, in my Grimoire's book, this symbol is as, as we see it here, and I'll place those uh, up on the screen so you can see them how they are in these books. Uh, so, the first was the, the, uh, the one from the Grimoire book, and now I will place the one from this magazine that comes from the Red Dragon manuscript. Now, why they're different, I don't know. It, it doesn't say why it, the one's one way, one's the other. It just is. The other symbols I see in the picture seem to be in their uh, normal disposition. They're, they seem to be um, the way they're supposed to be. Uh, but what I do know is, at least what is stated, that all of these symbols that you see are related to Saturn. Okay, And I will put uh, Saturn's symbol up here now. And you can see what that looks like. And see, it's kind of similar to a couple of the other symbols that are in the other two pictures that I showed before. Now, it be re being related to Saturn makes sense because Jimmy's astrological sign is Capricorn. And, as research has told me, the planet Saturn rules Capricorn. Strangely, in the Grimoire's books, uh, it states, for Saturn applied to Saturday. Now, I say it's strange because I read a quote years ago uh, when Jimmy Page was asked about his symbol. He said it was related to Thursday, which is also known as Thor's Day. Hammer of the Gods, anyone? Which is what Jupiter applies to, according to the Grimoire book. Uh, Jupiter applies to um, Thursday. Uh, my only guess there is Jimmy Page is probably trying to throw us off. They're close enough uh, related, plus it does have the, the Thor thing, the Hammer of the Gods thing. So, But that's page being page. Uh, so this pretty much settles perhaps where he got it from. From one of these, it's either from uh, my book. They're both old text, uh, reprints from old text. The, the, the Red Dragon, I believe, is a manuscript that supposedly is from the 16th century uh, I've read some places that said um, it's really from this early 17th century and it was just said to be back from the 1500s to 16th century, but who knows. Um, there's not a great detail, however, on, uh, on the individual uh, symbols. Uh, they all just represent Saturn as far as the... Um, uh, I'm going back a little bit. As far as the ones that are in there, they're all kind of related to Saturn. We don't know exactly what all those symbols mean. We don't know what this symbol means other than it's related to Saturn. And I could see Jimmy Page kind of going to Saturn. He knows it's, uh, you know, rules over Capricorn. So he went there, saw this thing, said, whoa, that's cool. I'm using that. If I had to guess, that would be the reason behind it. I mean, he had a good reason, Saturn-Capricorn connection. I'm guessing that's why he picked this. Out of all those, this is definitely the coolest one. So, uh, my research and spending money on uh, demon summoning books has, has come to this conclusion. I know where he could have gotten it, uh, where he could have gotten it from, and what it relates to. However, we still don't know exactly what it means other than it's related to Saturn. So I was just trying to recap my clumsy statements beforehand. As far as what I call Jimmy Page's symbol, it's that Jimmy Page's symbol. Uh, you know, it's like Bonham's symbol. I don't call it uh, three circles. I call it Bonham's symbol. I call Jones's Jones's symbol and plants so forth. Uh, the album itself I call No, I'm just kidding. I call it Led Zeppelin IV, just like every other sane person in this world. Uh, an album that good has to have a title. It can't go untitled. So I, it's it's called Led Zeppelin IV. That's what the Zeppelin guys call it. So 
Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope, uh, you know, you found uh, it had some good information in it. If you have any input, if you have any info, or perhaps you have uh, maybe a, 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 a copy, a good copy of one of these books or know where to find that Red Dragon manuscript, uh, there are, uh, I'll tell you this, there are Red Dragon books out there. Um, and I bought one and it doesn't have the symbol in it. So you got to be careful. I have not found yet the uh, Red Dragon manuscript yet. I've not found a copy of that yet. So, uh, but if you have any info, please leave a comment. Um, and even if you don't have any info, just leave a comment and please like and subscribe. Subscribe. That really helps us out and give us a like. I thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you later.